Quercast is a simple and visual software tool to help you analyze qualitative text data. When you download the full version from the website, you'll be given the option either to create an account here to test the cloud version where the projects are stored on our own servers, or you can use the offline version here, and this lets you store the data just on your own computer. So once you've signed in, you'll get a dialogue like this showing all the different projects that you've created. You need to create a new project to bring in any data. So I'm going to call this breakfast test two. Your further options here to password protect it or choose a structured questions project if you're importing data from a survey. Click on new project again and the project is created. It's blank here now. On the right side of the screen, this is where the text will be. And on the left side, this is where all the codes and themes are. So along the top, you'll see it says click to add source. And this button at the top gives you lots of different ways to bring in sources of text. You'll see we've got a bunch of different files here. And they're now shown on the right side of the screen here. Just gonna click here on settings, project preferences, lots of different options to customize how the layout is here. and just gonna make the text a little bigger. These tabs along the top of the screen here show you the different sources of text that we have. If you've got more than three, they'll be shown in a long list here and you can click just to select any of those. If you click here on the source properties tab, you can switch between the properties and the text of each source. Now the properties are the attributes that we associate with each source and let us identify different characteristics. So for example, we could put in one called age, maybe it's 32 years old. We can create another one, which is called gender, this will be female. So now we've created a property called age and gender and have the values 32 and female. But if we click on Simon's text here, you'll see there's no value associated for age and gender. So we can use the drop down values here just to choose anything else that's already in the project. Or we can create a new value here. So for example, male. And this means that in the future, we can always see the results from our coding from any particular group of participants. So I'm just gonna click uh, back on the text here and go back to Mabel's source here. Um, and we're gonna start doing some coding. So this big plus button here will create a new code or a quirk. Uh, we're going to call this one um, porridge. People are talking about what they eat for breakfast. Uh, some kind of gray color, I suppose, or blue will do. And we've got our little bubble here, so we can select some text and drag and drop it onto the bubble there. So now that text has been coded to be about porridge. Uh, we can do this with other bits of text as well. And you'll see that as you keep adding text, the bubbles grow. So it's showing you the amount of coding that we've done. So we've also got here, uh, so we're talking about baby. So baby has porridge, so we'll drag and drop that there. And someone's also talking here about milk. And so we can drag and drop these bubbles around, keep coding to them. And we can even create subcategories. So if we wanted to say, this is porridge with milk, we can drag and drop the milk bubble onto the porridge bubble like that. We can also change our mind at any time, just pull out the bubbles and you can create groups of subcategories this way. Right clicking on any of the bubbles here will show you uh, a lot more options. So you can edit any of the properties here. So we can change the name, we can put it in description or change the color. And now the process is going through and doing coding. So a couple of things to help you. Uh, so for example, there's a text search here. So if we wanted to look for every time somebody says the word milk, uh, these little dot dot dots will open a little bit more of the source. Big mug of tea and milk, and we'll drag that onto the milk bubble there. So we can code directly from the text results from any of the sources. There's also a synonyms database here, um, which can find other alternative words. And we can also do memos. So if you press this little button here, the memo column allows you to drag and drop a piece of text onto the memo column. And that'll create a little sticky note so we can record our own thoughts here. Sounds difficult. And these will be shown wherever that quote appears in any of the searches that you run in the future. When you've done a bit more coding, uh, it might look something a little bit like this. You can double click on any of the bubbles to see all the sources of text from them uh, and also the other subcategories that we have here. And we can also do queries. So we can look to see here exactly how the men in the project are saying. And we can do a side by side comparison here with the females. So this is how we're using the properties and we can see the differences in how they talk about diet, for example. Lots of different ways to visualize the data. So we can create word clouds, customize how they look. We can also export Word documents. This shows us how we've done our coding with color-coded highlights as a standard Word document, just as if we'd use highlighters. We can also create standard report. 
This gives us all the information about the project, our coding, and visualizations and graphics that we can export to other sources. So that's a very brief guide to Quercos. If you have any questions, ask us uh, at support at and download the free trial and try for yourself.